Hello there, I'm digital artist Aaron Rutten, and this is an unboxing slash review of the Samsung 960 EVO M2 solid state drive. And I'm also gonna talk a little bit about some of the advantages to using a solid state drive or SSD in your art and design workflow. So here I am unboxing this solid state drive. This is an M2 solid state drive, so it might look a bit different than some of the solid state drives that you've seen before. Those drives are kind of rectangular and about the thickness of a phone, whereas the M2 drive is shaped very similar to a stick of RAM. In fact, it's a little bit smaller and possibly thinner. This is called a non-volatile memory drive. So that means that just like an SSD, it doesn't have any moving parts and it's very reliable. Now I'm gonna show you how it installs here. It actually doesn't connect through SATA like most solid state drives and IDE drives do. It connects to an M2 port, which connects through PCIe. And PCIe is quite a bit faster than SATA especially if you have a more modern computer that can utilize a lot of the PCIe channels, it can be a very fast drive connection. So I'm using a Phillips head screwdriver to take out the screw that holds in the drive. And then I have a little magnetic screwdriver to help pull out the screw because it's a very tight space and it's hard to get things in there, especially if you don't wanna take your computer all the way apart just to put this in. Then you wanna go ahead and just slide it into the slot. It kind of lays down and then slides into a slot. It doesn't go straight down, it kind of goes to the side. I don't really know how to explain that, but you can see me putting that in here. It's not terribly hard to install, it's just kind of a nuisance trying to fit your hand in such a small space, especially if you have large hands. Now you need to put the screw in and screw it on to hold it into place, and that was really the tricky part because the Phillips head screwdriver I have is not magnetic, and so you can see me try to put it on here real quick. I'm gonna fail and drop it a few times. And you gotta be careful dropping that screw because you could drop it inside of your power supply or drop it somewhere where you might not ever get it back. So be very careful. I recommend if you have a magnetic Phillips head, just go ahead and use that. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to use the flathead magnetic screwdriver, put the screw on the end and very, very carefully try to just lay it down in the hole. And then I'm gonna go in with my Phillips head screwdriver and screw it in. So it's a very complicated task here, but I was very careful and I did manage to get it on the first try. Just be very careful not to poke anything on your motherboard with the magnetic screwdriver. Try not to gouge your motherboard or anything like that because you can seriously damage your computer. Be very, very careful when you're doing this. So now I'm gonna tighten that screw very carefully here. Get it nice and snug in that M2 slot so it doesn't come out. But you'll notice that doesn't take up very much space in my computer. Solid state drives, regular solid state drives that aren't M2 drives, they don't take up that much space at all either, but this takes up very, very little space. Once the drive is installed, I'm gonna turn my computer on and then I'm gonna enter the BIOS. You usually do this by hitting the delete key repeatedly as your computer's turning on. Your BIOS will probably look different if you don't have the same motherboard, but you wanna look under advanced and then look for PCI settings. And then I wanna look for M2, anything that says M2, that's the option that you're gonna want. And I'm gonna change this from SATA to PCIe. That way it's going to connect through PCIe and it'll be a much faster connection then the SATA connection. Again, your motherboard needs to support this. Most newer motherboards are going to. Now I'm going to configure this hard drive and set it up in Windows. So I'm going to search for computer management. And then I'm going to look for disk management. That's gonna show me all of my active and inactive disks that are connected to the computer. If I go ahead and make this window bigger, I can see the disks listed up at the top and the bars represent the disks down at the bottom as well. So I'm looking for the disk that is 500 gigabytes and it'll also have these little stripes across the bar showing that it hasn't been used yet. It's that disk there, disk seven. I'm gonna right click and choose new simple volume, then just click next and next again. And then I'm going to assign a drive letter. I'll just go ahead and use J and click next. You could choose whichever letter you want, choose whichever label you want. I like to label it so that I know which drive it is. So I'm gonna put Samsung 960 EVO M2. Now I've created that disk. Now I need to go back into that same area and I need to right click on that disk and I need to choose mark partition as active. That's going to activate it. Now we can see it here in my computer. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the advantages and disadvantages to using an SSD in your workflow. The advantages are there's no moving parts unlike a spinning disk, so they're more reliable. They have faster read and write speeds. They take up less space. They use less power. They're basically silent and they use less heat and they're not affected by magnetism. The only disadvantage is, is the capacity is typically smaller for the affordable versions. They're much more expensive per gigabyte than a regular disk. And because they're solid state drives, they tend to overwrite any blank areas on the disk or any freshly erased areas. 
So if you need to recover an accidentally deleted file, that's pretty much impossible compared to a spinning disk where you can usually recover deleted files quite easily. So just to prove that this M2 drive is faster than a regular SSD, let's use Samsung Magician, which you can download online for free, to go ahead and do a performance test of first the Samsung 850 EVO, which has a read of 554, a write of 527. Let's compare that to the Samsung 960. You wanna make sure you update your firmware too for each of these. I'm gonna click on start and I'm gonna go through the test here and you can see that it's 3,345 and 1,800. So the M2 is about six times faster than the regular SSD that connects through SATA 3. Now let's compare that to just a regular hard drive or a regular IDE hard drive here. Let's run a test and let's see. And for this particular drive, it's getting a read of a measly 129 and 143. So that even the 850 is five times faster than a regular IDE hard drive. So you can see there's a huge advantage to having an SSD. Now let's take a look at how my drives are configured here because how you use each drive is really important to your workflow. Now starting at the top, I have my Windows drive, which is C, that just has the Windows operating system, all of my installed programs, and I'm also using it for my Adobe Media Encoder Media Cache. Below that, I have a regular IDE spinning disk drive. It's 500 gigabytes. It only goes through SATA 2, so it's not quite as fast. In fact, it's my slowest drive. So that's just my redundant backup drive. It's an extra backup of a backup, just in case one of my backups dies, I still have that. Below that is my E drive, which is two Samsung 840 EVOs in a RAID 0, meaning that it's two drives that function as one. Although I've learned that in testing that, RAID does not improve the speed. In fact, it makes it a little bit slower, so I don't recommend doing that. I just have that as an extra cache drive in case I need it. Below that is the F drive, and that is a regular IDE 2 terabyte drive, which is partitioned into two separate one terabyte drives. That's connecting through SATA 3. The first partition is a backup drive for video projects and final renders of videos. The second partition is a primary storage drive for non-video projects. Below that is a regular IDE drive that's four terabytes connected through SATA 3. That's my primary storage drive for video projects and final renders of videos. Below that is my iDrive, which is a Samsung 850 EVO 120 gigabyte drive, which connects through SATA 3. Again, that's just an extra cache drive that I can use for caching files. Below that is the J drive, which I just installed. That's the Samsung 960 EVO M2 drive, which is connected through PCIe in the M2 slot. That's my primary work in progress drive. I put all my footage on there, all of my current projects, and I send all of my video renders there. I also use it for a cache in applications like Photoshop, and I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. And then last but not least, this drive's usually disconnected, but this is an external IDE four terabyte drive that connects through USB 3.0 and I just use this for temporary backups and some long-term storage of extra backups. It's good to have many, many backups of your backups because if you have everything on one backup drive, what if that one backup drive fails, then you lose all your data. If you have it backed up on two or three or four drives, then you don't have to worry about ever losing anything. Now, honestly, I have way too many drives here. I don't need this many drives in my computer. I could probably afford to remove some of these extra cache drives and that'll just free up a little bit of space in my computer and reduce the amount of clutter. Now let's take a look at setting up some of these drives. I'm gonna to go to Adobe Media Encoder, Edit Preferences and Media. I'm gonna set my cache to my C drive, which is a Samsung 840 solid state drive. That's the cache for Adobe Media Encoder and Premiere Pro. In Photoshop, I'll go to Edit Preferences and then I'll go down to Scratch Disks. And this shows me all the disks. Now I wanna use my extra disks as scratch disks, but my J drive isn't showing up, so I'm gonna close Photoshop, and then I'm gonna restart Photoshop, and I'm gonna hold Control and Alt as it's booting up. That'll give me more options, so I can select J for the first scratch disk, and then some of my extra drives that I'm not using. Having a lot of scratch disks that are very fast is going to speed up things like filters and working with large layer documents in Photoshop. So as many scratch disks as you can add, the better. Corel Painter works similarly to Photoshop. I can add a scratch disk to Corel Painter to improve the performance of Corel Painter. In Edit Preferences Performance, there's a scratch drive. I can't add multiple ones like in Photoshop. So I could pick J for instance for that since that's my fastest drive. So it's gonna make sense to add things that I want to load fast onto that M2 drive. So for example, if you were using Lightroom, you would wanna put all of your photos in Lightroom on that M2 drive. Now, the storage capacity isn't very large, so of course you can't put everything on the M2 drive. You can only put up to 500 gigabytes on the particular model that I got, but they do make models that are in the terabytes, 
but they're pretty pricey. So keep that in mind. What you want to do here is just have your fast drive as your work in progress. So what I do is I put all of my new projects on that drive. While I'm working on them, they stay on that drive so all of the media and all of the files load quickly. And then once the project is complete and the video is rendered out, I take those files and I move them off of the M2 drive and onto one of my IDE storage drives. Now I could have also used the M2 drive as my primary boot drive or the drive that has Windows and all of my installed programs, and my computer would probably load quite a bit faster, but I think the performance is fine using the Samsung 840, that's still a very quick drive. And I've also set it to rapid mode, which makes it quite a bit faster by creating some virtual memory. So I found that this configuration works really well for getting me really fast renders and really snappy results, whether I'm doing art or design on my computer, and it makes transferring everyday files extremely fast. So there you go, that's a quick look at the Samsung 960 EVO M2 solid state drive, and a general overview of the advantages and disadvantages of using an SSD in your art and design workflow. If you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video, and if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. I have more reviews of digital art products like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.